a month away and we've got another press conference to hype the fight up bearing in mind this is the third time they've made this fight and we've already seen press conferences but this one's got a twist to it this time it's just fury there is no music i don't get it either it's not a big press conference in london it's just fury and morton uh, they've just behind him with a microphone in front of him i don't know why let's see what he says i know all boxers say the same old shit like i've had a fantastic training camp yada 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 but i actually am having a fantastic training camp and well how fucking long has it lasted mate you've been training non-stop for this since you turned up against Ngannou looking like a sack of shit this cut actually seems to have been the best thing for him in the long term because he was so out of shape against Ngannou he had so much ground to make up he doesn't look like a heavyweight fighter training for a boxing match he looks like a before and after at a fucking weight watchers advert Quite to him he's lost all this weight you're not supposed to have to do that but it has been a few years since we've seen him looking this good and i'm glad for that because for this fight i want tyson fury at his absolute best to give us the best fight possible but also because i don't want any excuses and if you know you've got a fight coming up in however long there should be no excuses but there usually is got me dad in camp this time so i've got my secret weapon over there as well i wonder how that's going to work because big john's not been like the boxing trainer of tyson in fact he's pretty much insulted every boxing coach he's had as if to say well I know better and it should be me including Sugar Hill because Sugar Hill contradicted something Tyson said when he said I was training for the Usyk fight with Sugar Hill and Sugar Hill was over in the UK being like not at all so he right. basically called Fury out unintentionally to, for lying saying that he was preparing to fight Usyk when he never was and Big John instead of not understanding that this guy isn't up to date on the lies we're telling now got annoyed at him for dropping him in it so them two in a room together is interesting but I do think Big John could be a motivating character in camp you just wonder, given the fact that he's coached Tommy Fury, and I'll be honest, he struggled against KSI. So it doesn't fill me with confidence that you can go from your last coaching job of struggling to defeat KSI to now you're helping coach your son to fight the pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the world, arguably, when KSI didn't go so well. But to be fair, he was working with Tommy, so maybe this will work better. It was heartbreak when the fight was postponed initially. How long did it take you to, to get over that and, and get going again? At first, I was a little bit depressed for the first day or so, but afterwards, like all things in life, um, I realised God's time is impeccable, perfect. That cut was God's plan. I do look forward to the next Drake music video where he's going around just giving people cuts. God's plan. I don't get it, right? But fair play. If this is God's plan, maybe it is. Maybe it's bought him the time he needed to actually get in shape to beat this guy. So it wasn't my time to fight for the championship then, but it is going to be my time on May the 18th, so um, I'm really preparing fantastic for it. What I've got to say is the look of the jaw of Tyson Fury, the lack of flab on him, he does look like he's taken this seriously and he's speaking very clearly, very confidently, very focused. He's the opposite of Conor McGregor right now. And it is making me believe more that his chances have increased. I've got to say that kind of furiosity. <laughs> Who designed that? God almighty, Microsoft Paint, you could have done a better job with the logo. And you know what, Frank, yeah? I read a lot of comments, people saying, oh, there's four belts. Let's just get this one clear right now. There's a lot more than four belts on the line. You got... IBO, IBF, WBO, WBA, WBC, Ring Magazine, and Lineal. So for all you motherfuckers out there thought it was four, correction, it's seven. <laughs> Go wrong. No, I'm not. <laughs> I miss the side of Tyson. He actually is being funny there. Fuck me. Unintentionally still, but still funny. Oh, the Riyadh season, value. Yeah, you've corrected. <laughs> I, st I stand corrected. Oh, there's one. Eight. Right. So there's eight belts in one fight. That's got to be a record. Yeah. Right? It's fucking ridiculous is what it is. But yeah. I don't think you're ever going to get, you get a foreigner same up here with me. You get any American, any British fight I've ever fought in nearly 20 years of boxing. No one has ever competed with me on speaking. I do remember one man once telling you boxing rules protect you and that if it wasn't for those rules remember don't forget francis i know he got chinned by aj but we can't forget that this man eviscerated tyson fury on the microphone he told him and i tell you what no matter what happens fury should want that rematch he should want to stop francis and put that right because even still that's a massive mark on his boxing record a day one boxer put you down and took you to the scorecards and even beat you on one of the Stridger scorecards. So even after fucking Usyk and AJ, that's still an outlier. If you don't... <laughs> that is true Jordy in the pain game. <clears throat> As he goes in on Tyson Fury um, and his one-man, one-sided press conference. Okay, and a lot of key or KPIs... OK. That I want to add up and. Um, 
talk about key performance indicators, KPIs. You know, Tyson Fury and his father, you know, a lot of things that I love how True Jordy breaks it down because a lot of people forget what really truly happened because it's just so much shit on top of shit on top of shit on top of shit that you hear and then you kind of forget because there's new shit, fresh shit on top of the old shit and then the fresh shit smells better than you can remember it easier. Okay, cool. So John Fury joins this team and this is what I want to reiterate. If he joins the team coming off that KSI fight, then that's wouldn't, that wasn't a good victory for Tommy Fury, okay? Then on top of that, he goes into Tyson Fury's camp. So what qualifies him to be anything near legitimate or worthy of training Tyson Fury? You know, um, could he be, could he motivate Tyson Fury? I mean, I guess as long as Tyson Fury feels that he can, but can he bring anything other than that? No, because Javon Sugar Hill in his own words say, you know what? Everything is going to be the same way it was. John Fury is going to have his own opinion. I don't care about all that other shit. Everything else is irrelevant. So that means that John Fury might rant, he might rave, he might say this, he might say that, but it does not matter to Javon Sugar Hill, okay? He's going to do his job just like he done before. And I'm really impressed with Javon Sugar Hill because normally, normally, okay, like Ben Davison, you remember he had a problem with Javon Sugar Hill coming aboard and being that main captain and he's the co-main captain. That's why Ben Davison exits stage right. Okay, I just wanna I just wanna let you guys in on that. You know, Tyson didn't fire Ben. Ben left because Ben did not want help from another trainer, which was Javen Sugar Hill. Okay, so we have to let that out. So in this case, Javen Sugar Hill had no problem, unlike Ben Davison, of bringing John Fury in. You know, and that may be a bad thing. <laughs> or should I say not a good thing, simply because you know, John, he's talked shit just like True Jordy mentioned. He's talked shit about every trainer that's ever been there for Tyson. And in fact, he should be praising each and every one of them because this is the catch. Here, here, This is one thing. This is the bomb dropper right here. What if Tyson gets his ass handed to him by Alexander Usyk? You know what the whole, you know what it's going to come down to? Who, what's the difference? John Fury. Maybe if John Fury wasn't there being a distraction, maybe he wasn't there stating his opinion, maybe if he wasn't there um, uh, 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 restricting the instruction of Javon Sugar Hill the right way or trying to be that second man in Tyson's ear, Tyson would have been able to focus on one instruction and then therefore, you know, he couldn't. And then therefore, Alexander Usyk tapped that ass. That may or may not be the truth, but then you have to understand for people that are Fury fans that are also fanatical, that are also those bandwagon guys, they will not be able to accept that. So they have to find something. So I just gave it to you. There you go. John Fury. If you want an excuse, you want miracles, you want a, sa a savior or a reason for Tyson Fury not doing his full potential, I give you John Fury. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's a surprise to me that Javon Sugar Hill would even allow that because, you know, uh, the guy and the pedigree of Javon Sugar Hill, especially coming from training royalty from Emmanuel Stewart in the Crunks gym, he doesn't really have to put up with that. He could have taken his ego and put it on a pedestal and said, you know what? I won't train you as long as your father's there because your father's been talking shit about me for the last two years now, year and a half or whatever it is. So no, I don't have to do that. He didn't do that. He took the humble road, okay? The more of a passive approach about it. So again, you have to look at Javon Sugar Hill in that way. Now, does um, Tyson Fury, according to the uh, title of True Jordy's article here, or video, is this fake confidence? Um, 
I think he's trying to search for confidence. I don't know if it's necessarily fake. I think he's trying to, uh, I think he's trying to do this for assurance. I think he needs more assurance and I think he needs to convince himself. Now, fake confidence, I, I mean, if that's what you want to call it, okay, but understand this about Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, I think he knows he's in one of the toughest fights and one of the most difficult and uncertain fights of his career because this is not a Derek Chisora three fucking times. This is not a Deontay Wilder three fucking times. This is not an Otto Wileen that's limited. This is not a Tom Swartz. The Swartz will be with you. This is not Pianetta. This is not Safari. You know what I mean? You didn't take the fight with Klitschko. So what else do you have? This is not a guy that never been in the ring before. Francis Ngannou. Okay. So that, and, and again, he found out, he fucked around and found out about Francis Ngona while he got in the ring with him. But before that, what on paper, what was it? He's never been in the ring before. So that's leverage, people. So this fight, he does not have leverage. The only leverage that he has, according to his trainer, Javon Sugar Hill, is he's bigger. <laughs> in a, uh, a good little one versus a good big one, you know, the good big one wins every time, Right. We'll see. But no, great breakdown from True Jordy, my man, uh, breaking it down. I don't know if it's actually fake confidence or whatever it is. I believe that Tyson Fury needed some confidence. OK, so he's trying to build some, you know, and the way he does it, he talks smack. And then that's how you do it. You talk smack and then you, you know, <laughs> You know, and then, then in that in that uh, essence, you are building this that for you feel better about, you know, winning. So I think that's Tyson Fury in a nutshell. And I think that's the reason for Ryan while he decided to go and have a one man interview. Now, before I let people go, while I have people right here, the attention I, I did not like, and I'm going to be, I'm going to make this known. I did not like nor care for Turkey Alashik to show and put his two cents on how much he cares about Tyson Fury without doing the same thing for Usyk. I just thought that was a red flag. Okay. As you guys heard my video about Mr. Alashik, which he's doing great things in the sport of boxing. Okay. I'm not saying that he's not. What I'm saying is there may be Based on his comments about Tyson Fury, there may be some favoritism. Just letting that be known. You guys tell me what you think about True Jordy's take on Tyson Fury. Is it fake confidence? Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been Counterpunch. Peace.